Good afternoon. Uh, this is Sunday, January 27th, and this is a video response to a white heron discussion board. There were some very good things about this discussion board, and there were some not so good things about this discussion board. First thing I'd like to say, what you always want to do in any discussion or essay that you're writing about literature is avoid plot summary. And this is a common pitfall that students sometimes um, well, often actually sort of make when they're first starting to learn about literary criticism, etc. And that is the student will sort of retell the story before the student starts to st sort of address anything of significance. And so a lot of you started your, your post with, a white heron is about a girl named Sylvia who's nine years old and lives in the woods with her grandmother. And you would go on to finish telling what the story was about. And there's really no need to do that. Um, that's all I can say about it. Please just try to avoid doing that. Assume that your audience is people who've read the story and you just jump right on in with whatever your main idea is. The second thing is, I think I would advise you to read the prompt carefully because the first part of the question asks you to look at different elements of local color writing and talk about in what ways a white heron deals with um, or, or had elements or displayed or illustrated elements of those um, different characteristics of local color writing. So, you know, your thesis statement or main idea statement could be, you know, the setting in a white heron is like many local color stories or the theme. And, and eventually you all did get to this and I'm going to review who did and, and what was good. But just, you know, as a guide, if you're, if you're kind of struggling with how do I start this or I'm not sure what to write, look at the question and just sort of restate uh, the question um, putting forth your point of view about whatever the answer to the question is and then you can use the rest of the time to develop it. Third thing, you don't want to forget in order to get full points, you want to quote from the story. You want to pull out quotations that illustrate, you want to pull out specifics from the story that really illustrate what it is you're writing about. Now a few people did do this, but many of you did not, or you really only put like, you know, two words. Um, so you want to work to do that. And the last thing I'll say is you want to work to um, not repeat material. You know, if we were in class talking about this story, how many posts began, a white heron is a story about a girl named Sylvia. If we were in class having a discussion, once somebody said that once, if other people started to say that after someone else said it, you would look at them like, why are you saying that, what she just said? So it's sort of the same idea. I know it's an artificial environment. It doesn't feel the same as talking to each other. But that's what the discussion board is. We're trying to simulate being in the classroom and having a discussion together. So you got to show me you read what somebody else wrote. I think what you guys are doing is making your post and then going in and reading somebody's and putting out, yes, I agree. You know, um, there were two or three responses that were very good and it was obvious the person thought about what he or she had read and was responding but a lot of the responses last week were that was a great idea or I love your interpretation thanks or that really helped me see the story another way even if that's true if you don't illustrate in what way the person's um, comment changed your point of view or added to what you thought it just doesn't seem like it, it really has a lot of meaning so I hope you will take my advice um, so that you can get full credit on these discussion boards. Now some things that were really good about this week's discussion board. Um, I liked, um, uh, let's see, I'll start with Jeremy. Jeremy talked about the theme uh, of a white heron and a lot of local color stories uh, have a common theme and that is sort of like looking back in a sort of sentimental or romantic or nostalgic way at, at ways of the past and sort of worrying about the future. A lot of times you'll see a conflict between a pastoral sort of existence and a simple country kind of life versus industrial kind of life. And so Jeremy talked about that and he mentioned the romanticism versus realism kind of um, mindset in, in a story such as that. Linda Craig also brought up, and, and was the first time I saw it discussed in detail, the romantic elements which sort of look to nature and nature um, being this, this uh, thing that is good and, um, and yet having realistic elements like um, the poverty in which Sylvia and her grandmother found themselves um, and that kind of thing. So, so Linda Craig's um, was good and it also um, 
she provided nice extended quotations from the story to illustrate things that she was talking about, although I would like to see a little more transition between your ideas and quotes, quotations from the story. Now, Kirsten Gray had also, aka Savannah, had also talked about and written a really good analysis, too, of the romantic versus the realistic. Um, uh, but, you know, it was after Linda had already done it. Uh, and so what I would like to see, but she had different quotations. So what would be cool is if, like, Kirsten had, had referenced in her post, you know, Linda already mentioned the romantic versus the realistic, and she'd done a great job. I've got a few other quotations that illustrate it in another way, and then add those in. And then that shows me you read someone else's post. You don't really repeat the part that they put, but you can expand upon it by putting quotes of your own that you thought worked really well to illustrate the point. Um, also saw Alexis talk about symbolism. Um, everybody tried to talk about what does the heron represent because that was part of the question at the end. But uh, when Alexis did it, she talked about various elements and their symbolic significance. And uh, just, you know, different things, different people thought about, um, like Christine Hattie wondered about the white. And, and I thought Rebecca answered well about, you know, often represents purity. And so, you know, a white heron now, it's rare too. You know, it's a real rare bird, purity. And so what does the heron represent? There are various choices. Um, but those of you who picked up on the heron and Sylvia are kind of alike. It's not necessarily, I mean, Justin said the heron represents Sylvia. I don't know that I'd take it quite that far, but certainly Sylvia feels a kinship with that heron, and she and that heron have a lot in common. I'm sorry I forget who mentioned how she would have liked the hunter better if he didn't have a gun, you know. Um, so that kind of also points to she's kind of like the heron. If he wasn't somebody that was going to dominate, destroy, use for his own purposes just so he could admire or whatever, then maybe she could like him better. But because he destroys the very things he loves, that's the thing about him that makes her not want to ally with him at the end. I liked how Jeremy really brought out the point, too, that with this internal conflict, Sylvia didn't decide until like the very last minute that she wasn't going to tell. I mean, she was going to tell until she got home and the grandmother and, um, and uh, the, the hunter ask her about it. Then that's when she decides. And it's not with great certainty either. Um, you know, Jeremy brought this up uh, in response to someone else's post. It's not with great certainty that she made this decision. There was some doubt. Um, but, um, but yeah, she chooses. Some of you said nature over this or doing the right thing. But I think she chooses like her personal code or to be true to herself. Someone else mentioned her personal code. And I'm sorry, I don't remember exactly who referenced that in the discussion. But yeah, she chooses, you know, she has feels a kinship to all these these elements of nature that she didn't feel in the city, as some of you noted. You know, she was like that geranium in the pot that was just kind of dying. She'd think of that red-faced boy who would tease her, and, you know, she was being strangled, you know, just sort of suffocated in the city, you know, lit symbolically, not literally. So, yeah, that was good. Um, so some of you noted that. I liked that Christopher Duffman talked about the importance of setting because local color story setting is very important. Sometimes so important the setting becomes almost like a character in and of itself. And Christopher mentioned that and that was good. I liked Justin's um, development of the idea of this internal conflict that um, Sylvia had. And, um, and I like Shanice's response. Um, I thought it was a good response, too, but I don't know who. Um, but I'd say that in general, my dog wants a walk. She's right here trying to... Okay. But in general, uh, you know, there were some good things in the discussion uh, for a white heron, but, you know, just be really careful about repeating material and, and not reading what other people posted. I know, like, Barrett had asked a great question about this, you know, why did you mention the past? You know, don't you think she's also pure in the present? But because she asked that on the 20th and the discussion board was getting ready to close, no one had a chance to answer. So I would also encourage you to try to get into the discussion board a little bit before the, the last day it's going to be open so that you can actually get a real conversation going. All right, so you have a great day, and uh, I'll talk with you again soon. Keep up the good work.